Okay, so here we are with the homework worksheet again, which you can download if you want and do it before you watch this video. Um, uh, I'll say it again. The rhythm chapter and curriculum for the RCM level 5 exam, if you're doing that, is probably the toughest question. And I expect that a lot of you will have to watch this video two or three times before you get it. So I will try to do a good job. I even have a glass of water because I'm going to be talking a lot. So I'm going to go slow. First question. Add the missing bar lines. Remember to add a double bar line at the end. Now before we do anything, if you actually are doing an RCM... Um, level 5 theory exam, there's actually a mistake in the glossary at the end of the book. A double bar line looks like this. Okay, I'll put one there. There's a double bar line. That's what a double bar line looks like. Now, this down here is a final bar line. Okay, those are two different things. A double bar line is used to uh, it's used to show the end of a section in a piece of music, whereas a final bar line is used to show the end of an entire piece. Now, if you open the book, the um, if you open your level five theory book and look in the glossary, they say that this is a double bar line. That's wrong. Um, so, you you should know that this is a final bar line and this is a double bar line. So don't get those two mi things mixed up. Okay. So, first thing, first question. They've given us the time signature, and uh, we have to fill in where the bar lines should be. Okay, so here's the clues to figuring out how we are going to go about doing this. Um, three, four. The groupings for three, four is three quarter notes in a bar. Okay, so we are going to count. And again, I'm using pen. Don't do this at home. Use a pencil at home. So we know that four sixteenth notes go into one quarter note, so that could be one beat. There's an eighth rest, or sorry, there's an eighth rest and an eighth note. We know that two eighth notes is equivalent to one quarter, so that could be one beat, two beats. And this is a triplet eighth, and a triplet eighth We know that a triplet eighth is worth one quarter note, so there's going to be a bar line here. This is one beat, that's the first quarter note. This is the second beat, second quarter note. And this is the third beat, third quarter note. So we can go ahead and write a bar line in there. And of course, when you're doing this at home, you could do it with a pencil. So if you did make a mistake, you could erase it after. Okay, let's figure out the next length. So again, we need three quarter notes because we're in three, four time, three quarter notes. So there's one quarter note, that's easy, that's one. Here's an eighth and two sixteenths. I know that this eighth separates into two sixteenths. It's a really badly drawn sixteenth note. And four sixteenths make one quarter note, so this whole thing is one quarter note. So there's one quarter note, and then there's two quarter notes. And now we have two eighth notes, and I know that two eighth notes also make up a quarter note. So there we go. There's one, two, three. And then a bar line goes here. Okay, next one. There's a sixteenth. There's a group of four sixteenths. Again, I know that there are four sixteenths in one quarter note. So there's one. Here's two eighth notes. I know that there are two eighth notes in one quarter note. So there's two. And then we have a quarter rest. So there's the three groups. One, two, three. And the rest would go here. Okay. And now it looks like this is already done for us, but let's just check. There would be beat one. That's one quarter note. A sixteenth triplet is worth one eighth note. And it's also been attached to one eighth note. 
So this is an eighth note, and that's an eighth note, so two eighth notes make one quarter, that's the second beat of the bar, and then there's the third beat, so one, two, three. And this is the right answer, okay? I can clap this for you, one, rest, rest, okay. Question number two. They've given us the bar lines, but we have to figure out what the time signatures actually are. This is a little tricky, and we have to be detectives now and use a bunch of clues, okay? The clues are as followed. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to find the simplest bar of music and figure out the length of that bar. Then, uh, something else we can do is we can look at the beaming system, how the beams are uh, written to try and figure out uh, how uh, the groupings within the meter work. Uh, we can figure out, another thing we can do is we can figure out whether the groups can be divisible into twos or threes. If the gr groups are divisible into even numbers, like twos, then uh, it will be simple meter, and if the groups are divisible into groups of threes, then it will be compound meter. And the last thing we're going to do is make sure that the time signature, once we've chosen it, is that it applies to every bar. So, let's start with the first one. Let's find the simplest bar of music. Something's not right here. <laughs> My computer screwed something up. So we're going to pretend that's not there, and we'll all fix it on a... When you download this sheet, that won't be there. We'll pretend the question ends here. Sorry about that. Okay, so we'll go from here to here. This question is now this long. Alright, so let's find the simplest bar of meter. Or, sorry, let's find the simplest bar of music. I think this is the simplest bar of music. There's one dotted quarter note, okay? If I break this up, uh, we get three eighth notes. Okay. One, two, three eighth notes fit into that single symbol. Okay. So, this is divisible by threes, so that's a good hint that we have, we are working in compound meter. Let's see if each, every, and let's see if every other bar also has uh, three eighth notes in it. Can we fit this in that one? Well, there's one eighth note. Two sixteenth notes make another eighth note. And then these two sixteenth notes make another eighth note there. So that works. Let's figure out this bar. There's one eighth note. There's another eighth note for that eighth rest, and these two sixteenth notes can make another eighth note. So there's three eighth notes, three eighth notes, and I'm pretty sure this last bar has three eighth notes too. Let's see. So there's one eighth note plus a dot. A dot is half of whatever became... A dot is half of whatever came before it, so this dot is a sixteenth note. There's a sixteenth note there, there's a sixteenth note there. If you combine these two sixteenth notes, you get an eighth. So there's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. Okay, good. So every bar of music has three eighth notes in it. So they're based on the grouping, based on the amount of eighth notes, and based on the groupings, we can say that this is in three eight time. Three eighth notes. All right, let's do the next one. This one's a little tougher. So first thing we should do is find the simplest bar of music, and then we might, we might have to uh, look at the beaming system. So where's the simplest bar? This bar looks very simple. Now some of you probably haven't seen this symbol before. This is a double whole note, also known as a brevet. Okay, they used it in medieval music. We don't really use it anymore. Um, 
I've never seen it in music other than medieval music, to be quite honest. Maybe it's in choral, modern choral music, perhaps. Anyways, the textbook wants you to know it, so I put it there. So this is equal to two whole notes. So it's eight quarter notes in that one bar. So in this bar, we have eight quarter notes. Eight four is not a popular time signature, and it's not one we learned in this course, so we'll assume for now that the line of music is not in 8-4. However, let's just test our theory and make sure there are actually eight quarter notes in each bar. So that would be, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that one has eight quarter notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That has eight quarter notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so every bar in this exercise has eight quarter notes. Fine. Now, is there an easier way to divide these? Let's look at the beams and try to figure out uh, what groups, uh, what amount of quarter notes are in each group. So let's look at this bar. There's a group of two quarter notes, a group of two quarter notes, this could be a group of two quarter notes, and this could be a group of two quarter notes. So there's two quarter notes in there, there's two quarter notes in there, there's two quarter notes in there, and there's two quarter notes for these two. There's one group, two group, three group, four group. Okay. So there's four groupings, perhaps. Let's check this bar and see if there's four groupings. Uh, we can put one, two, two groups can fit in there, that's fine. And then this would be a group. And this would be a group. This bar is also grouped in fours. And can we group this one in fours? Uh, there's four quarter notes here. There's three quarter notes in this. And there's the fourth one. That could be one group, two groups three groups, four groups. So each bar is grouped in, each bar contains four groups, and in each group there's two quarter notes. Oy vey. So, two quarter notes make a half note. There are four half notes in each bar. Is it possible that the time signature is four, two? If you just said yes, you're right. That was a little bit, uh, well, that was a lot of work. Now, how did we figure that out? We counted the amount of beats, we grouped them into larger groups, and we made sure that we were in simple time and not compound time. We're in simple time because our groups contain even numbers of beats. If we were in compound time, uh, these are groupings that we found would have had uh, odd numbers like threes. Okay, so the answer is four, two. Last question for question two. All right, step one is to find the easiest bar of music. Uh, I'm scared of this thing. This thing scares me. There's a syncopation there. Oh, that looks nice. So let's say that this is our simplest bar of music. And that's also not supposed to be there. Ignore that. Question ends here. So this is our simple, simplest bar of music. Already, before we even have to count, I can see that based on the beams of this bar, we are in simple time. And I know that because there, uh, this looks like a group and this looks like a group and there is an even number of beats in each group, which means we're not in compound time. So it can't be 6-8 or 3-8 or something like that. We are definitely in uh, simple meters. So perhaps it's going to be 2-4, 3-4, or 4-4. Four, four. So I know that these four sixteenth notes make one quarter. And I know that these four sixteenth notes make one quarter. And I know that there are two quarter notes in that half note. Okay, one, two, three, four four quarter notes, perhaps we're in 4-4 four, four time. 
Based on this bar, we suspect we're in 4-4 four, four time. That's fine. Let's just confirm it with the other bars. Uh, we'll work backwards, okay? So these two eighth notes make one quarter note. There's a sixteenth, a sixteenth, and then an eighth note. And an eighth note has two sixteenths. So there's one sixteenth, two sixteenths, four sixteenths. And I know that four sixteenths make a quarter note. Uh, that's obviously a quarter note. And then this is two eighth notes. The photocopier has destroyed my homework assignment. Two eighth notes make a quarter note. Oh look, there's also four four. Uh, there's also four quarter notes in that bar. Okay, so that's looking good for us. Let's double check with this bar. Um, this is a quarter note plus a dot. A dot it means half of whatever came before it. Therefore, this dot is an eighth note. So this is a this is a quarter note. That dot is an eighth note, and there's an eighth note here. Two eighth notes equal another quarter note. We have two quarter notes so far, and this is a quarter note triplet, and you know that triplets equal uh, the next note value up. So the next note value up from a triplet is a half note. So all of these, these three quarter note, this quarter note triplet thing equals a half note. And one, two, three, four, that's four. Okay, so four, 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 four. And we're pretty sure this is four, four. Here's a 16th note triplet. Remember, a triplet equals one note value higher than what it actually is, so three sixteenth triplets equal an eighth note. There's an eighth note, and there's another eighth note. Two eighth notes equal a quarter note, so this is one quarter note. Uh, there's two eighth notes, that equals a quarter note. And, okay, here's a quarter note, and then there's a dot. This dot is half of whatever came before it, so the dot is a uh, eighth note, because an eighth note is half of a quarter note. And these two things are worth an eighth note. Sheesh, this is a lot of work. There's two eighth notes there, and that equals one quarter note. So we have one, two, three, four quarter notes. <sighs> okay. We are in 4-4 four, four time. Last question, and the most hardest question. Now, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Filling in rests. Now, in order to do this, you already need to know the groupings for each meter. So, before you can do this question, you need to already have memorized the groups for the meter. So, you already have to know that 2, 2 is 2 half notes and 4, 4 is 4 quarter notes. You have to know that 3, 8 is 3 eighth notes. You need to know 6, 8 time is 2 groups with 3 eighth notes in each group. For 4, 2, you need to know that there's 4 half notes. C, remember, means 4-4 four, four time. It's a shorthand for 4-4 four, four time. C is common time. Uh, Three-quarter notes, 3-2, three, 2-4. Two, two, okay, so to do this, this is the hardest question on the exam, in my opinion. So step one is to write the groups under the bar. Let's start with this one. The groupings for 2-2 two, two, is two half notes. Okay, so we need to add rests under the brackets to fill out this bar. I often like to start from the back. Okay, so let's fill out this last group first. So we can have, we can break this half note into two quarter notes. Let's finish the first quarter note first. So a quarter note can be, we have a sixteenth note here. Let's then break this quarter note into four sixteenth notes. This is one sixteenth note, it's crossed off. Now, we have three sixteenth notes left to be put here before we can cross off this whole quarter note. Now remember, in a group of four things, you cannot attach the middle two. You cannot attach these two. If you put an eighth rest here, you are attaching these two. That's wrong. So instead, you just have to write one sixteenth note and get rid of that. Now we have two sixteenth notes left over. In a group of four things, it is okay to attach two things. Or the, sorry, in a group of four things, it's okay to attach the front two. 
So these two sixteenth notes can become one eighth rest. And now that's gone. And that's our quarter. So we have half of this so far. Now to make this, uh, to fill this out to the remaining uh, value of the group, the half note, we have one eighth, uh, sorry, one quarter note left. And we can just put a quarter rest up there. Scribble that out. Scribble that out. Okay, so that's the back half of this bar, all those doodles. Now let's go to the front. We have a quarter note. Let's again break this half note into two quarter notes. Okay, there's one there, so we can cross this one off for sure. And now we have one left over. We can put a quarter rest. And what you see here above the scribbles is the right answer. A quarter note, quarter rest, quarter rest, and then an eighth rest, a sixteenth rest, and then the eighth. All right, next question. Step one is to write out the groups. So the grouping for 4-4 four, four time is four quarter notes. You write them out so you can see them so you don't get lost. Let's start from the front of the bar this time. So let's finish the first group, okay? So one eighth note, or sorry, there are two eighth notes in a quarter note. So we have one eighth note here already, so all we need to do is put another eighth rest, and we can cross out this. We finished this group, now let's work from the back group. You always work, you always work in this way when you're filling out rests. So let's figure this out now. This is a triplet eighth note. We know that a triplet is worth uh, one note of greater value than what you're actually seeing. So this, these are eighth notes. So the three triplet eighth notes are worth one quarter note because a quarter note is one note value higher. So this whole thing is worth a quarter note. So actually I can cross that out. Okay, now we are left with two quarter notes in the middle. Now you remember the diagram. When you have a group of four things, you can attach the front to, you can attach the back to, but you cannot attach the middle to. There were four things here. One, two, three, four. You cannot attach these two things because they're in the middle. So if you put a half rest here, that's wrong because you've attached these two. You need to put a quarter rest up there and a quarter rest up there. And this is the right answer for that question. Do not put a half rest there. Next one, three, eight. Step one is to write in the groupings. We have three eighth notes and they are all grouped together. Actually, I should have put a beam. Uh, it looks bad. This is why you don't use pen. Okay, so we have, uh, we can start with the front or the back. Let's start with the front. We have an eighth note, so that's one crossed off. We also have a dot here, and dot is whatever is half of whatever came before it. So half of an eighth note is a sixteenth. So this dot represents a sixteenth note. There are two sixteenth notes in an eighth rest. So there's one gone, and now we just have to add one more sixteenth, and that will equal an eighth note. There's our sixteenth rest. That's the dot, there's the thing, there's the rest represents that, and that's gone. Sheesh, this is a long video. I'm already getting tired. Okay, and now last grouping, we, we, there's a sixteenth note here. We know that this is broken, this can be broken into two sixteenths. So, uh, let's break it into two sixteenths. There's one sixteenth there, cross it off, and now we need another sixteenth. And that is the right answer for that one. Two sixteenth rests. Six, eight, okay? This is the one I warned you not to get confused with three, four time. So the first thing you do is write the groupings in underneath. And the grouping for six, eight time is two groups. And each group has three eighth notes in them. So on the large scale, you're working with two beats, and on the small scale, you're working with three beats. 
we will start with the first group. Okay, here's a sixteenth note. I know that there are two sixteenth notes in that eighth. So there's one, cross it off. And in order to finish this eighth, we can put another sixteenth note, cross it off, cross off the eighth. Okay, now we're finishing this grouping. We have two eighth notes back here. Now, you remember, in a group of three things, you can attach the front two, you can attach the whole thing, but you cannot attach the back two. So, these are the back two of the group of three. So we cannot put them together. Two eighth notes equal a quarter rest, but we can't put a quarter rest up there because that would be attaching them. So instead we have to put one rest for each. So a rest for an eighth note is an eighth rest, and a rest for an eighth note is another eighth rest. There we go. Cross off, cross off. Let's finish the back group. I know that two eighth notes are in this quarter note, so uh, we can cross off those two, and now we are left with one eighth, and we can simply put an eighth rest up there. And that is the answer for the six eight bar. Next, it's a bar of four two. And it's hard to see because the printer destroyed the page. There we go. Four two. Okay, so first thing we do is write down the groupings. There are four half notes in four two time. We could start by finishing the back group or we could start by finishing the front group. Let's just finish the front group first. So we can split this into how, how are we going to do this? We have a quarter note, we have a dotted, and we have a dot. So we have a dotted quarter note. So we're going to be dealing with eighth notes. So let's start by splitting this into two quarters. Okay. So this is one quarter gone, but the eighth is half of that, so that's an eighth note. So now let's split this quarter into two eighth notes, I'll just write dots. And uh, that dot is that crossed out, and now we need one more eighth note, that's an eighth rest, we put that there. That's that, that's crossed off, that's crossed off, bang. That is that group. Okay, now we don't do the middle, now we work from the other end and finish the last group first. So here is a sixteenth note. Oh dear, we're gonna have to work in sixteenths. Okay, so first I'm gonna break this into quarter notes. There are two quarter notes in t uh, a half note. And then I'll break each of those quarter notes into two eighth notes, because there are two eighth notes in a quarter. And we know that there's one sixteenth in one of those eighths. So if I put a sixteenth here, I get to cross off one eighth. There's an eighth crossed off. Okay, now to complete this quarter, I need an eighth rest to represent that eighth. Okay, that's crossed off and that's crossed off. I'm halfway there. Now we have two eighth notes and we can combine them into one quarter rest. There was a group of four. We split it up into eighth notes and there was four eighth notes here. So in a group of four things, you can attach the front two. That's okay, I showed you up there. So there's four eighth notes, we can attach them. So we'll use one quarter rest for this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. Good. Now we're at the middle. Back to this problem. When you have a group of four things, you cannot attach the middle two. Are there four things here? One, two, three, four. Yes, there were four groups. So we can not attach the middle two groups. So we need one rest for there and one rest for there. If you attach them and put a whole rest, it's wrong. Okay, so one for one half note, we'll put a half rest, and for one half note, we'll put a half rest. And the half rest goes on this line facing up, and the half rest goes on this line facing up. Next bar. C means 4-4. Four, four. We'll write in the groups. One quarter note, two quarter note, three quarter note, four quarter notes. Now this one, 
doesn't have a rest at the back. So we're gonna start from the front and then go this way. We don't need to start backwards from here because there's no rest. Okay, so this is a 16th note triplet and we know that a triplet is worth one greater note value than what you actually see. So these are triplets, or, sorry, these are 16ths. One note value bigger than a 16th is an eighth note. So this is worth one eighth note and I know that there's one, there are two eighth notes in a quarter, so that's half. There's the two eighth notes, there was the one gone. Now we need one more eighth note to finish the quarter, and there it is there. Okay, now we have three quarter notes left over. What's the rule? You can attach the front two, you can attach the back two, you cannot attach the middle two. These two are the middle two, they cannot be attached. So these two are the back two, they can be attached. So we're gonna attach these and then leave this one on its own. So two quarter notes can be represented with a half rest there. And then this can just be represented as a quarter rest. Last line, huh? I might as well do the whole page. Okay, three, four. What's the grouping? three quarter notes. Notice there's nothing here. I actually, I did that on purpose to teach you an important lesson so you don't lose marks. On your exam, when you have an empty bar in this question, all you have to do is write a whole rest. Now a whole rest is worth four beats. It doesn't matter. No matter what time signature you're in, when you have an empty bar and you need to add a rest, you always add a whole rest, okay? It doesn't matter if it's an empty bar in 4-2, it doesn't matter if it's an empty bar in 3-8, it doesn't matter if it's an empty bar in 2-2. Two, two. On this question, the filling in the rest question on your exam, you get an empty bar, all you do is write a whole rest in it. It's the box on the third space hanging down. And that is the right answer. Even though it's technically wrong because this is worth four quarter notes and only three quarter notes go into a bar, it's what you do. Okay, last two questions. Three, two time and two, four time. What's the grouping for three, two? Three half notes. Okay. This is an eighth. This is a dot. It's a dotted eighth. A dot represents half of whatever came before it. That means this is a sixteenth, because a sixteenth is half of an eighth. So we are going to have to do some subdividing on our diagram. So two quarter notes go into the half note, and then we can break these two quarter notes into four eighth notes. And we're going to be working with groups of four things. So there's an eighth note, there's an eighth note, that's one gone. This is a 16th note. A 16th note is half of this 8th note. So what can we put here to finish this 8th note? We can put a 16th rest. That's that 16th plus that 16th gets this cross off. There's one quarter note gone. Okay, now we have one quarter note left over. This was a group of four things and this is the back two. We can combine the beats in the back. So we'll just put a quarter rest. That's gone. That's gone. Okay, now we have two more half notes, okay? Now, we were do on this level here, we were dealing with groups of four things, so we used uh, the rules that apply to groups of four things. But on the larger level, one, two, three, this is a group of three things, so we're going to be looking at this diagram. Can we attach the back two? Can we use one whole rest for these two back beats? Let's see. You can attach the front two, you can attach the whole thing, but you cannot attach the back two. So no, this was the back two of a group of three things. You can't attach them, so we need one rest for the, this half note and one rest for that half note. Half note can be a half rest, and half note can be a half rest. Done. That's the right answer. Hooray, the last question. I didn't even drink my water. Okay. <clears throat> two four time, what's the group? Two quarter notes. 
looks like we're going to be dealing with sixteenths because this dot represents half of whatever came before it. It came after an eighth, and half of an eighth is a sixteenth, so there's... Uh, write out four sixteenths for one quarter note. Four sixteenths for one quarter note. Okay. How many sixteenths do we see here? There's two sixteenths in that eighth note, and there's one sixteenth here. So three of them already got crossed off. There's one left over to make to finish the first group. And we can just put a sixteenth rest there, and then that's that whole group gone. Okay. Finish from the back. Uh, there's one sixteenth, so that's this sixteenth gone. Now we have three sixteenths left over. There, this is a group of four things. Look at the four diagram, we cannot attach the middle two. So this one has to be left on its own. We can attach the front two and we'll put these two together. So this one will be its own sixteenth rest. And then we can attach these two on the front. And that is a eighth. Hooray! <laughs> now, look at all this writing. That's a ton of diagram work to complete this question. If you are doing the level 5 RCM exam, you have to practice this rhythm. I, I think this is the toughest one. Once you get the pattern, once you've practiced, it's easy. But it's a lot of work to start out with. I mean, look at look this whole this homework page looks like a catastrophe. It looks like a mess. So, uh, so if you are using my video course to study for an exam, you're gonna have to do this all the time. You're gonna have to practice this at least on a weekly basis. So, no matter what unit and what videos you're watching, at any time if you're preparing for my exam. Please always come back to the rhythm questions and keep practicing and study these diagrams. You have to know the diagrams, you have to know the groupings of the meter, and uh, this question on the RCM exam is worth 10 marks, which doesn't sound like much, but, um, well, it is, is it, 10 marks is a lot, so make sure, make sure you do it. <laughs>